What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another Pokemon VGC video. Today we're gonna to be talking about the competitive potential of Ursaluna in future VGC formats before you guys, you know, get on your keyboards and mashing on them like, ooh, Moxie boosted, there, there's no competitive in Pokemon Legends Arceus, you're dumb. We can't use these Pokemon in competitive. Yeah, I know, everyone knows that. You're not saying anything new. Basically, what we're speculating on is the fact that these Pokemon have had abilities data mined and they've had their stats data mined, and they're going to be transferable into home eventually. So what we're looking forward to is the eventual release of these Pokemon in a competitive game, whether it be Sword and Shield through an update, whether it be BDSP, I suppose, if we still play that, uh, or even just Gen 9. Basically, despite the fact that we won't know the metagame surrounding these formats, we do know that these Pokemon have these stats and these abilities, so it's pure speculation. However, there are certain types of Pokemon that just tend to do well in competitive so we can get a good idea as to how good they're going to be. So if you guys enjoy this at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in this video, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications because I bring you daily VGC content. And that's here in the comments down below. What do you think about Ursaluna in VGC going forward, whether it be Gen 9 or Sword and Shield, anything really? But yeah. Uh, I'm going to try to do these as double uploads for the next couple of days. So basically at like noon, we'll have a Pokemon Legends Arceus sort of thing. And then at 3 p.m. we'll get back to like the regular uploads, like, you know, battling on Sword and Shield. Uh, the new season actually just started. Uh, series 12 has began, and I'm also trying to go for Twitch partnership. So if you guys want to support me, uh, you can actually watch me battle live uh, at 5.30 p.m. CST. So yeah, I, I go live on Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays. That that's just a side thing. Let's go ahead and get into the video. I'm sure you guys don't really care that much. <laughs> But Ursaluna has absurd potential. If we look at the stats, they're sort of comparable to Slacking and Regigigas, except where Slacking and Regigigas have good stats in like everything, um, including speed and special attack, this per er, this this Pokemon is min-maxed, so it has the stats exactly where it needs it and nowhere it doesn't, right? So Ursaluna has 130 HP, 140 attack, 105 defense, 45 special attack, 80 special defense, and 50 speed. The 50 speed, honestly, I'm cool with. If it were any faster, it'd be completely broken. 50 speed means that you have to give up some bulk investment to actually outspeed things, or go with Trick Room, which is much more tricky to run uh, in competitive than just having like a Pokemon that's always good. Uh, so yeah, Ursaluna, I think despite that, is going to be good even on non-Trick Room teams, because we've seen bulky Pokemon that are slow do good regardless of the fact that they're not on Trick Room teams. Like, you can literally run, like, a Calyrex Ice without Trick Room. You can run an Incineroar as, like, a support Pokemon without Trick Room, despite the fact that that's slow. This thing has the tools it needs to be good regardless of the situation it's in. So, what does Ursaluna have at its disposal that makes it just over the top great. Beyond these stats, it's mainly guts. I'm gonna be honest, it's guts and the typing of ground normal. Being immune to ghost is huge. Being immune to electric is huge, especially in VGC where we have things like Regieleki running around, uh, Tapu Koko, like Electroib is huge for speed control. And just the typing overall is just so good. Um, Ursaluna with guts is especially great because it has access to not high horsepower, it has its own signature move called Headlong Rush, which effectively is a ground type close combat, and while it's only 100 base power in Pokemon Legends Arceus, so is close combat, it's only 100 base power, but it's like, the, the, it's the exact same effect but ground type. It deals massive damage as a physical move and then lowers both your defenses, so I'm pretty certain that when we get to Gen 9 or this thing gets transferred into Sword and Shield or whatever, Headlong Rush is likely going to be 120 base power, because otherwise it's just like a slightly more reliable high horsepower with more drawbacks in my opinion. So yeah, that's huge. But why does Guts make it so good? This thing is also a normal type, which means it has Stab on Facade. Facade is a move that if you don't know, grants you, here we go, grants you double power if the user is burned. And that does stack with Guts, so Guts increases your attack stat uh, by 1.5 times, and Facade doubles in power. So basically, you can imagine Facade being like, you know, 140 times 1.5. That isn't the exact calculation because it's your attack stat that gets increased and not the move itself, but you can think about it that way. So basically, it, you just have absurd damage output on Ursaluna, regardless of the situation. Like, if you get intimidated and you have a Flame Orb active, it's like you never got intimidated. And the Guts ability combo with the Flame Orb also makes it 
really, really good under Trick Room because being burned grants you immunity to Amoongus's Spore, which is such a common thing. So you can't be paralyzed if you're burned. You can't be slept if you're burned. You can't be frozen too, which I don't think is going to be too much of an issue. Uh, but yeah, like the fact that you're status immune and the only thing you have to like you only, the only thing you have to care about is the consistent damage from burn. It isn't that much. Like that is such a great upside. We've seen how good Guts Pokemon are in doubles VGC formats. Um, and I say doubles VGC because in BDSP we saw Hariyama and that's not necessarily true of VGC, so I call it doubles. Uh, it, it's so good. The consistent high damage output coming off of ground in normal is especially great because you're gonna be able to one-shot so many different Pokemon. Regardless of like the facade thing, being able to hit things with a guts boosted stab ground move is huge. You're gonna hit things like Heatran, you're gonna hit things like Tapu Koko, uh, other huge Pokemon, I guess. We can just look at like Picolytics usage stats. Uh, let me see. So Picolytics, if I could actually type right. Like just common Pokemon that we see right now. Uh, we're not gonna care about Legization and stuff, but uh, let's see. So Torkoal is just like straight up gonna get one shot. Porygon 2 is actually huge. I wanna look into Porygon 2 calcs for this. Porygon 2, also sign to note, the bulk, unintimidated Mian Xiao, because you can't intimidate it. Uh, close combat on max HP Ursa Luna is only doing 96% maximum. So yeah, like just max HP, you naturally tank one of the strongest moves in the game from one of the most reliable users of that move. Uh, so yeah, what was I looking at? I was looking at Porygon 2 calcs. So I want to show you guys how much we can expect this thing to do. So this is just like a standard Porygon 2 with Eviolite, one of the bulkiest Pokemon in the game. If we give this thing Stab Facade with Guts Flame Orb and it's burned, it's doing 70 to 83% on a neutral Pokemon that's as bulky as Porygon 2. This is Eviolite Porygon 2. So this isn't 112 defense. This is effectively, if we want to look at like the actual stat, let's get rid of that and give it a 50% boost. Uh, this thing, oh, we can't really look at it. Uh, this thing has like, what, 112 times 1.5 is like 170 something, I believe. Uh, so yeah, like that's crazy damage output on like everything. Even on like other Pokemon, like if we look at Landorus Therian, that's a huge thing that you're going to face in most VGC uh, formats. Landorus Therian. That's the wrong Landorus Therian because that was like the weird format where everything was bulky. Uh, Picolytics OU set. So this is just like, oh, why why do I keep getting weird Landorus Therian sets? Here, blank set. We'll just do like 4 HP for now, even though they don't tend to run just 4 HP. So this is a Pokemon that intimidates you. So you're already at minus one technically. Your facade at minus one is still doing 83 to 98%. So if you're unintimidated, if this thing just doesn't intimidate you because you like switched in after it, all of a sudden you're just like one shotting it here, like literally like 125%. That's that's absurd. Like that's crazy damage output. Not only that, but even like the defensive sets, if you're unintimidated, you're still like one shotting it. This Pokemon is capable of so many KOs like right off the bat. Obviously you have to be careful for Incineroar. Incineroar is a Pokemon that can like pivot in on you, uh, fake out you, outspeed you, and go for like parting shot and stuff. So even though you one shot Incineroar with freaking, you know, neutral facade, uh, at minus one facade won't KO. But your ground type close combat headlong rush will still one shot it if you're burned. You actually have to get to like minus two before it's actually able to stop you from KOing it. And even then it's a roll on like the bulkiest of Incineroars. So yeah. I wanted to take a look at that first, just the general like damage output this thing has, because it's absurd, uh, but also just the coverage it has. It has access to pretty much every move that Ursa Ring usually has, and that includes the elemental punches. So Ice Punch is something that you could run, but honestly, you don't need coverage on Ursa Luna because of the high damage output coming off of uh, Headlong Rush and Facade. So like even versus resisted Pokemon, what's like a Steel type we tend to face in VGC? Uh, let's go with Celesteela. Even versus like Celesteela, yeah, like this. Like, this is a super defensive spread. They're not really. It's it's more offensive, but, you know, 228 HP, that's pretty decent. A resisted Pokemon, Celesteela, at neutral, Guts Facade has a chance to two-hit KO that. That's crazy. And that's... I, and these, these stats haven't even been correct. I'm running an adamant one in this damage calc. If we're adamant, or I'm running a hardy one for, like, all these recent calcs, if we switch it to adamant and see how much it actually does, we're doing, like, 50% minimum. Let's look at Incineroar again. Incineroar, yeah, Facade still does a ton. Let's look at Landorus again. 92% minimum at minus one versus like four HP Landers. This thing is crazy. So yeah, like it has all those like great 
attributes to it, just like the guts boosting the 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 immunity to statuses and like the great stab moves it has. But also you have options with this guy. You don't have to run the flame orb. You can go with the choice band for immediate damage. Uh, I honestly don't think it's a good set, but it's a set that you could run. Uh, and you can go over like uh, a speedy set, right? Just so you know, the, the choice band is effectively just a flame orb, but you could have higher damage potential if you get burned on the switch in while you are choice banded. And you can go for like rock slide, double edge high horsepower, ice punch, uh, or you could run like a bulky set. You could run like a leftovers bulk up uh, Ursa Luna, which if you run that, um, I mean, it has like great longevity uh, because for one, you have that absurdly high defense already and you can just invest more into like special defense because of that you don't even have to run like max attack on this guy. You could honestly like just bolster that special defense to the point where it's very hard to break through you and then go for a bulk up and then hit things as though you were a guts boosted Ursa Luna and still get recovery. And if you do get burned on a, like a leftovers bulk up Ursa Luna, all of a sudden your leftovers are just negating the burn. So it's like you're not burned at all. You just have an immunity to status. So yeah, that's that's absurd. Ursa Luna could also go with an assault vest. Uh, that obviously doesn't have as high damage output as choice band bulk up um, or, or choice band Ursa Luna or like leftovers bulk up or flame orb even. But it would provide you much more longevity because that 130 HP on top of the 80 special defense is actually really, really crazy. Let's uh, let's go ahead and just plug that in. So let's go with like, what's a good Pokemon to exemplify this with? Uh, let's go with Tapu Fini, just like max special tech Tapu Fini is something that you typically see in a lot of like early VGC formats. 252 modest and why not? We'll, we'll give it Hydro Pump even. We won't even go for the Muddy Water Hydro Pump. So like worst case scenario, you're facing this, right? So if we give this guy, and assault vest and max out its HP and give it like four special defense. Look at this. The hydro pump from the Tapu Fini with a modest nature and max special attack is only doing like 66% maximum. We can increase that even more. What's another like really relevant Pokemon that can probably do a ton of damage to this guy? Um, as far as like special attackers go, I guess we could go with. I don't know, like there aren't very many like super strong special attackers on the water side now that I think about it. Most of them are just bulky. I suppose we could go with like Primarina. Primarina is like a pretty decent example of this. Uh, we even give it Life Orb because Primarina tends to run Life Orb. If this thing hits you with a Hydro Pump, it's only a roll to KO. And even then, the HP is kind of wasted on an Assault Vest set because you can just decrease that and bolster your special defense particularly. And all of a sudden, you know, with just moving around a couple of points, you're living that. Right there, 98%. And then what do you do? You hit it back with like a facade or a headlong rush and you're doing, what is it? Is this still burned? No, this is not burned. This is just normal close combat or normal headlong rush. You're doing like 95% minimum to a pre-marina. So you have a higher chance of beating that pre-marina than the pre-marina has of beating you. I love this Pokemon. It has so much potential. Um, you can run a Jolly set as well. I think I pointed that out earlier. If you run a Jolly set, you can run like a Swords Dance thing, right? So Jolly Swords Dance is another possibility for this Pokemon. Just hit 107. All of a sudden now it, it like under Tailwind, you're outspeeding Dragapult. Max that out and over bulk up run Swords Dance because Ursa Ring does naturally get Swords Dance. And now all of a sudden, not only are you one of the bulkiest Pokemon in the game, but you're also one of the scariest things to face under Tailwind because you're outspeeding their entire team and you're at plus two. So an Intimidate isn't going to save them. A Burn isn't going to save them. It's only going to make the situation worse. And you could even just, I don't know, you wouldn't want to run like a Lum on this Pokemon since uh, you actually want the Guts boost. So as far as like the item on that set goes, you could run like a Figgy Berry. Figgy Berry or like a Citrus Berry because your bulk just lets you use those items so well. This Pokemon has so much potential in competitive, I don't even know where to like stop talking about it. There are so many things that you can do. There are so many Pokemon that you can just straight up one shot. I think it's gonna be a very centralizing Pokemon once it hits the metagame. And that excites me for some reason. I just like having a lot of broken stuff in VGC. Uh, that's new, you know, when it's new, it's super fun. And I don't know, the, the stronger that Pokemon get, the bulkier the format gets. And I personally prefer bulky formats. So as soon as we release Ursa Luna out into the wild for VGC players to use, things just get crazy and I love it. So yeah, that's my thoughts on Ursa Luna. It was a bit rambly, I know, uh, but there's just so much to talk about with this Pokemon and 
just a lot to explore. Let me know what Pokemon you guys want me to use next or analyze next in the, the upcoming video. And if you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, check out my Discord, check out my Patreon, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.